everybody welcome back to a max velocity weather forecast and today what we're going over is the tropics this is watching the tropics episode 9 where we're going over the latest with two different tropical disturbances right now one in the gulf of mexico and one also in the atlantic ocean that we're watching very closely there's also an ongoing tropical storm in the pacific ocean we'll get to that later in this forecast make sure stay tuned hit the subscribe button down below make sure to like the video let's get right into it so as of right now we have two areas as i mentioned before right now one over in the central kind of western portions of the Atlantic Ocean now and there's also one now newly in the Gulf of Mexico now our first one that we're we'll mainly paying attention to in this forecast is actually the one that is currently to the east of South America this one will be kind of going in this direction potentially actually going towards the United States this one will have to be very well monitored over the next several days as it moves off to the west now it has a 40% chance of developing within the next 48 hours it has a 70% chance of development within the next five days so it is fairly likely to develop now we also have another system System right now in the Gulf of Mexico not nearly as organized not a whole lot of thunderstorm activity it is a low pressure system as of right now it doesn't have any chance really of developing within the next 48 hours it has a 20% chance of development though within the next five days so there is a low end chance that this does develop maybe into a low end tropical depression or maybe even a little tropical storm here's a look at the tracks as of right now with both these systems kind of the broad area right now of areas of development so here's the first one as I mentioned before again it's a 70% chance of development over the next five days so right between here and there is the five day span basically of where this will be heading so we'll be going through the lesser Antilles moving off to the west the most computer models again have been keeping it kind of south of the United States but I'll get to that in just a moment give you some more specific details looking over to the north again this is the other system this is expected to go actually possibly towards areas like south Texas which should bring a lot of rainfall by the way to some of those areas not a lot I mean we're talking maybe a few inches possibly as high as like six to seven inches over the span of several days so there will definitely be some beneficial rainfall with this for those that really need it otherwise we're not looking at a whole lot of impacts as of right now at least in terms of like you know tropical impacts all right let's take a look at the ongoing um system right now out in the central portions of the atlantic ocean again this is invest 94l this has actually been an invest for over 40 i believe 48 hours now a lot of thunderstorm activity we're not seeing a whole lot of organization as of right now but there is a lot of thunderstorm activity associated with this ongoing system again your kind of low pressure system is kind of centered there as of right now and again it's heading off to the west it is starting to try to develop a bit more the last 24 hours were not really that prominent with storm development it has been much more prominent though, over the last six hours so it is definitely starting to strengthen all right let's take a look at the one in the gulf of mexico so as of right now there's actually been some thunderstorm activity right along the gulf coast and you can see a lot of thunderstorm activity here near louisiana mississippi alabama those areas even the panhandle of florida has been seeing some shower and thunderstorm activity over the last 24 hours that's also associated with this little uh system right now again it's not an invest yet and i don't know if it will be coming invest but it will again be a possibility to develop in the next five days or so fairly low end chance it has been riding the coastline it's dealing with some shear not a whole lot of saharan dust though here but again your low little circulation area right now is kind of near louisiana so that's where we're looking as of right now again it's interacting with a lot of land the overall chance of, de of developing is pretty low by the way the saharan dust real quick i'll go over this really quickly again there's a little bit of saharan dust up in the gulf of mexico very minimal though not really impacting the development of that ongoing system and there's also saharan dust all across here the central northern portions of the atlantic ocean it goes all the way up to the north uh but as of right now where the ongoing invest is there's really hardly any um saharan dust really impacting the system so very good or really bad news i mean overall but there will definitely be a potential that does develop um again over, over the next several days all right let's go to the invest 94l's track over the next several days for most computer models and all the computer models actually so far have kept this fairly far to the south now about 24 hours ago we were talking most of these computer models were actually bringing it in this direction so it has shifted pretty dramatically now, it very well could shift again back up to the north. More computer models might bring it that direction. But as of right now, almost all of them are bringing it in the same exact direction, going right towards Central America. So that's what we're looking as of right now. Uh, does not seem to be impacting as of now the greater Antilles. It might bring some you know, rainfalls, increased amount of waves, that sort of thing. But it doesn't seem like there will be too many major impacts, at least, from that system. Here's a look what the ensembles are showing as well. You can see, again, all the uh, ensembles long-term are bringing this actually possibly into the Pacific Ocean. So that's what we're looking at with most models as of right now. Uh, the first this north one over the last at least this latest run has actually kept it kind of going maybe toward the yucatan peninsula uh there has been a couple of computer models from the scan before this one that was actually bringing it kind of in this direction but overall most of them are gonna it looks like keep it south of the united states which is, is very good news overall but it might bring some impacts again to land here's like the intensity guide over the next several days most computer models again 
bring this to at least a low uh, at least a tropical depression or something like that within the next 48 hours but some of them have been bringing it to a tropical storm as early as in two days from now so definitely something to watch very closely and possibly by you know four to five days out this actually could potentially become like a category one hurricane now there's one computer model bring this up to a category three i don't expect it to become a category three hurricane by any means i only think this is going to peak at maybe a category one or a very low end category two very well depending on where it tracks now if this were to enter into the gulf of mexico for example we could be seeing you know major hurricane but i don't think it's going to get to that level and i just don't think it's going to really go that direction either so overall again very good news there's like the wind field over the next several days as well i know a lot of you guys are wondering where this might be heading over the next several days let's go ahead and hop into that so here's a look at the uh, the uh, little wind area so this is where we're looking back down to the bottom right of your screen that's the area of wind now the purples are really representing 40 to 45 knots which again is really a low-end tropical storm by thursday eventually going to friday and start to see that wind field much better circulation down there reaching about 50 to 55 knots and eventually once it gets closer to landfall the gfs small indicating could peak as high as possibly 80 knots which would be again a probably probably somewhere around a category one hurricane or so and then eventually make landfall possibly this upcoming weekend so that's what we're looking at as of right now long term nothing really else after that but that's definitely again gonna be a very well something to watch over the next several days all right let's take a look at tropical storm celia as of right now this has been a system that has been a tropical storm for a while very defined circulation by the way for a tropical storm very well defined a lot of thunderstorm activity as of right now uh nothing significant in terms of thunderstorms again this is far away from land south of the peninsula in mexico so overall it seems like this system will not be much of an impact over the next several days in fact the uh, the national hurricane center has been really keeping this below uh, hurricane levels i don't even think it became a hurricane so it's going to remain a tropical storm again really the wind speeds will kind of die down over the next several days you can see it'll eventually become a post tropical cyclone by monday eventually into tuesday it'll eventually become a tropical depression and move off to the west northwest really not impacting land by any means but it might you know impact some boats cruise ships that sort of thing uh, if any of those sort of things are out in this uh, part of the ocean here's like the overall tracks as well you can see again moving primarily off to the west northwest going away from land really off to sea nothing really in the track of this beyond really the next several days other than maybe again a couple of cruise ships or something like that it's the intensity guide as well just kind of give you an idea of where it's headed it's gonna be going on downtrend as i mentioned before not really any computer models are increasing the intensity and i don't expect that again it's gonna be going into cooler waters and as well as not just that but just a lot more shear and whatnot is gonna really impact the overall development of this system here's a look at the names by the way for the rest of the season in the atlantic ocean again we've already had alex so that one's already crossed off the list bonnie would be our next name so if let's just say the gulf of mexico system develops quicker and it becomes named which i don't know if it I, i'm almost 100 sure it will probably not become much of anything but if it were to get named it might be bonnie or colin and then vice versa same thing for the one in the atlantic ocean it might become bonnie or colin so just keep that in mind and then also Look okay, at where we are in the hurricane season as of right now. So again, we're around June 26th or 7th or so right now. Uh, you can see that this is kind of the area that we're looking right now and where we are at. Or excuse me, that's not where we're at. We're actually back here, right? uh, but we're right about there right now. Again, we're going to be kind of going on this flat on trend for the next month or two. And eventually, again, by early August, hurricane season starts to really start to spike a little bit more. And again, the peak of hurricane season, if you're new to it in the Atlantic Ocean, is September 10th. That's always been it. And we're really going to see the most activity usually between really August first to about i would say october 31st or so really is the best chance for any tropical and hurricane sort of development so definitely another time to watch very closely again make sure you stay updated with max velocity here on our youtube page for the latest we'll keep you updated across the tropical and really hurricane season over the next several months we'll keep you updated with the latest on all of those make sure to hit the subscribe button down below make sure to like the video this forecast is brought to my platinum contracting all that's repair and patriot safe rooms